people sacrifice things for Islam, ya khi. People sacrifice everything for their religion. What have you done? What have you sacrificed? And the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam, when he says in the hadith reported by Tabarani and narrated by Samim al-Dari, لا يبلغن هادا الدين ما بلغ الليل والنهار ولا يترك الله بيت مدر ولا وبر إلا تخله الله هادا الدين بعز عزيز أو ذل دليل. The Prophet Muhammad, salatu salam, says that this religion of Islam will reach the four corners of the world. Islam will reach the four corners of the world. There will not be one single house anywhere in the world that have not heard of Islam. Islam is moving. Islam is on the go. Islam is on the go. The fastest growing religion, according to the statistics, is Islam. Wallahi, this is the statistics not done by Muslims, by the way. Non-Muslims have done statistics. The fastest growing religion, Islam, and the surprising thing is the ratio of people embracing Islam are four to one. Every, 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 every person that embraces Islam, يعني four to one, meaning four women for every man. The people who are embracing Islam, four women to every man, which means there are more women embracing Islam than men. Allah Akbar. Allahumma lak alhamd. Allahumma lak alhamd. So this religion is moving. The question now is, what is your role? The caravan is moving. Either you jump and you serve and you help, or you're going to be left out in the back. You're going to be left out, really. So either you move on and jump and participate and pitch in and earn and benefit, or you're going to stay back, ya akhi. Wallah, you're going to stay back. So do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do something for this time. Think insha'Allah ta'ala. Whatever you can do, just don't stand still. Don't stand still. DSS, do something. The least, ya akhi. Be proud of your name. Be proud of your identity. Be proud of your, of, your, of your culture. Be proud that you're Norwegian, but you're the Muslim Norwegian. You're the Muslim Moroccan Norwegian. You're the Muslim uh, Somali Norwegian. You're the Muslim Pakistani Norwegian. Whatever it is. It is whatever it is are you proud that you're Muslims yes. brothers are you proud that you're Muslims yes. are you really proud yes. sisters are you proud of your hijab yes. Allah, 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 Allah. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. نعم. The topic that we will be talking about today is very very important topic and in fact it's something that um, is geared towards not only the youth. Although for me all of you are youth. Even those with gray beard like myself, all of you are youngsters. The the legacy. What have you done for Islam lately? Not what have you done for me lately. What have you done for Islam lately? What is your legacy? What is your message in life? Or what is your vision? In fact, you know, I may have mentioned this some time back. When I was in the U.S. going to school, I was in the university in San Francisco, and then a, a teacher... At the, I was taking this psychological course. It's a course about psychology. And then the teacher at the very end of the class, he says, what would you like people to say about you after you die? What would you like people to say about you after you die? And that's how he ended the lecture. He just kept that question sort of like at the very end of the course. What would you like people to say about you after you die? And that was like 20 years back. I still live with that question. What is my legacy? What do I want people to say about me after I die? How do I want to be remembered? How do you want to be remembered? Some of us will leave a legacy behind them and some of us will not be remembered. Some of us will come and go and when their name is mentioned, nobody will remember them or nobody will even know them. People will not be making dua for them because they did not leave anything behind them. But others... Others 
who have done something for the Islam, who have done something for the society, who have done something for the community, who have done something for Norway, who have done something for Sweden, who have done something for Oslo, who have done something for Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Whenever the names are remembered, people would be making dua for them, Muslims. People would be saying, may Allah reward them. People would be praying for those who have initiated Islam net. Because these people have initiated Islam net today, tomorrow they'll be gone. But they have left a legacy behind them. Maybe the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the companions, what have you done for Islam? The companion would say, oh Allah, here is my ear, here is my nose, here is my neck, all being chopped up for your sake. I have done something for Islam. I struggled and I strived for Islam. You, what would you say when you stand before Allah and Allah was to ask you, what have you done for my deen? You would say, oh God, I prayed. Allah would say, your prayer is for you. But what have you done for Islam? What have you done for Islam? And that is the question. This is why the Prophet Muhammad used to attribute lots of importance to the youth. The carriers of the flag of La ilaha illallah. The youth. When we talk about the Sahaba, by the way, my brothers and sisters, we tend to think that they were all elders. In fact, today, I will have a message for the youth. I will have a message for the, our uncles and fathers and mothers. And I will have a special message for the sisters. Yeah. A very special me- Wallahi coming from the bottom of my heart. And you will see sisters today, I'm going to make you so happy that you would wish you would have wing to fly off of happiness. No, the message is not that I found a husband for you. I have something better than that. I'm going to show you your value, your value, your true value. Yes, when the shuyukh when the scholars, they tend to talk about Islam, they usually mention companions, or they usually mention Prophet Muhammad But very few of us tend to mention that these Sahabis, that these companions are nothing but a product of women. They are a product of women who have raised them, who have raised lions and tigers and lioness. Let me tell you a few stories. And I love to mention stories. <laughs> Let me start with, in fact, you know, just to put things into perspective, when we talk about Ali or Umar or Uthman, you know, the very first thing, you, let, let's picture, you know, oh no, maybe it's a wrong thing to say, but if I, if I hear Ali ibn Abi Talib, or I hear Umar ibn Khattab, or I hear Uthman ibn Affan, for the first time I hear them, I may visualize them as an old man with maybe some, some turban, with maybe a long white beard. In fact, Ali, when he embraced Islam, he was only 10 years old. Umar, 26, 27. So was Uthman. Abu Bakr, less than 40. Youngsters. The very first ambassador to Islam. 20 years old. Youngsters. Mu'ad and others. Very, very youngsters. This is why the Prophet used to attribute lots of importance to the youth. He understood what the youth can do. So he spoke, he spoke their language. He spoke a language that is understood by the youth, that is understood by uncles, by mothers, by fathers, by the elders. Everybody was able to understand the Prophet Muhammad Usama ibn Zayd, he led an army. In that army was Abu Bakr. In that army was Umar. In that army was Uthman. In that army was Khalid. How old was Usama ibn Zayd? He was 17 years old. Youngsters, yet lions. There was a man. There was a man by the name of Rabi'i ibn Amr. In this battle called the Battle of Al-Qadisiyah between the Muslims and the Persians, 
The, Mer- the Persians, they outnumbered the Muslims. The Persians were about 200,000 or 280,000. The Muslims were about 20,000. Sa'ab Nabi Waqqas, the leader of the army, he had to send someone to negotiate some terms with the Persian army. So who did he send? He sent a youngster by the name of Rab'i who was about 20 something years old. So he goes, Rabbi ibn Amr, in his donkey. He's walking with his donkey. You know, those of you who are friends, have you read donkeys before? You see, for the donkey to go, and shh, for the donkey to stop. So he kept on saying, you know, and then he moved. He entered the palace of Rustum, the big guy, Rustum, you know, the, the leader of the Persian army with all his, all, all the, the soldiers and whatnot. And he comes, Rabbi ibn Amr, on his donkey, Ira, Ir, Ir. and then he goes in. This guy wants to provoke him. This guy wants to provoke him. But Rabbi ibn Amr, he had a vision. He's not there to be provoked and he's not there to be bought. Let me repeat, he was not there to be bought. Rabbi Rustum told him, Malakum ayyuhal Arab. Oh, what's wrong with you, you Arab? What's up with you, you Arab? We know you as the lowest civilization compared to the, to the Romans, compared to the Greek, compared to the Indian civilizations. What brought you, oh Arabs? You were a bunch of, 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 of shepherds in the desert. Look, he's trying to provoke him, insult him. Your Arabs are ru'ah, ru'at al-ghanam. Your Arabs are, yeah, and he's talking about Asan Arabs. We were a bunch of shepherds. What brought you here? And the Ba'i says, you're right. We were a bunch of shepherds. But, ibza'atan Allah, linukhrish al-ibad. Min ibadat did ibad ila ibadat di rabbi al-ibad. But Allah has sent us out to bring people out from worshipping people to worshipping Allah. To bring people out from the tightness of this dunya to the, to the vastness, vastness of the akhirah. To bring people out from the atrocities and, and, and justice of other religions to the justice of Islam. This is why we're here. This is why we're here. Look at him, this little boy, about 20 something years old, talking to the greatest king of the time, or the leader of the time. But he had a vision, a youngster. Yes, he left a legacy. Yes, he left a legacy behind him. So was another man, so many mans. I'm gonna just mention a few illustrations. Another man by the name of Abdul Rahman bin Hudafa. Abdul Rahman bin Hudafa, my brothers and sisters, he was caught as a prisoner of war. By the Romans. Now the Romans. So they caught him. Listen to this story because a lot of us youth can relate to this story. He was a young man. He was the leader of a small army. He got caught as a prisoner of war. So uh, Kaisar, the leader of the Romans, came and told him, Listen, I can set you free. I can set you free. Just leave your religion and I will set you free. He said, La wallahi, I will not leave my religion. I will not denounce my religion. And then Qaisa told him, Tayyip, if you, if you denounce your religion, I will split my kingdom with you. I can rule half of my kingdom and you can rule the other half of my kingdom. You become the other king of Rome. He told him, no, by Allah, I will never, never denounce my religion. Even if you're to give me the entire world and whatever it contains, I will not denounce my religion. Then the king says, I will kill you. Abdul Rahman says, do as you wish. Allah, 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 Allah. Do as you wish. So they brought in this, this big basin, container of very, very hot water. And then they brought one of his friends that were with him. Before his eyes, they brought him and they, they threw him into that basin of very hot water. Before his eyes, he could see his brother dying, the bones coming up to the surface. And then they started bringing him to throw him as well. His eyes teared. He cried. They told Qaisar, he's crying. Maybe he's scared. Maybe now he can denounce his religion. They brought him. Qaisar told him, are you ready to denounce your religion? He says, no, by Allah, I will not renounce my religion. He says, then why are you crying? He says, I was crying because it's only one soul that would die for the sake of Allah. It is only one soul. I only have one soul that will die for the sake of Allah. I wish, I wish 
I had as many souls as the number of hair in my head to die all for the sake of Allah, one after the other. It is only one death. It is only one soul. But I wish I had too many souls to die for the sake of Allah. No, I will not denounce my religion. Then the king says, there is no need for us or no point for us to kill this guy. What should we do? What should we do? Oh, they found a very good thing to do. They thought that this guy who's a young man, full of energy, away from his wife for a long time, the only way maybe to get him to come out is to seduce him. Mm, now I'm talking your language. <laughs> Try to seduce him. So what did they do? They jailed him and they went to one of the most beautiful girls of the town, one of the prostitute, and they told her, listen, the only thing that, you need, that we need from you is not for him to commit adultery. No, no, we don't want that. Just, just a kiss. Just a kiss. So she goes. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so she goes into his cell or whatever it's called. She enters and she, well, عياذ بالله, she undressed herself. She took off her clothes and she goes in. What does he do? Ah, brothers. What does he do? Ah, what? What does he do really? He covers he, he, What does he do? He covers his eyes and then she goes to him. She goes to him. What does he do? Oh Allah, Allah, Allah. What does he He runs away. Wallahi, oh he runs away. And then she runs after him. And then he runs away. La, what does he say? La ma'ad Allah innahu rabbi. Wallahi, it happened. Subhanahu al-Karim. Something similar to this happened in the US, in one of the dorms in the US. You know, there was this Muslim guy in the dorms. Wallahi, it's true. It was in the news. You know, one well, Muslim guy in the dorms and, and he does not pay attention to these girls. And you know a girl, brothers, you know a girl, if you don't, if you don't sort of pay attention to her, oh man, she becomes so mad. Oh, he's not looking at me. He has to look. And the guy, he, you know, every time he passes by a girl, he, what? He covers his eye and he lowers his gaze. And the girl says, no, he has to look. They kept on, uh, you know, all the things, all the, uh, the tie and whatever it's called. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me. You know, so, and then the guy, he is just ignoring them. He's not looking at them. You know what they did? Full of them. Wallahi, full of them. He's in his in the room in the dorms. They came, they bunched in. They came straight into his home. And the guy, he's by himself. Four girls come into him. Like this. And then the guy, he looks at the girls. You know what he does? He jumps from the window. <laughs> MashaAllah, tabarakallah. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Brothers. Who is the man here who will tell me I will jump from the window? Four American girls come in, jump. Would you jump from the window or in the window? <laughs> what would you do? Well, it's a true story. But you know what? This is what I like about the US. You know, now nah, there's some justice. They brought the girls and they, they jailed them. The girls, he's a Muslim. They gave him his justice. They gave him right. But anyways, this guy, what happened? He's covering his eyes. He's running. And this girl, she's running after him. And just like who? Another story, something similar to this. Like who? Yusuf, 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 alayhi salam. Yeah, when the wife of the minister of Egypt, you know the story, the wife of the minister of Egypt, she, she put all, you know, she beautified herself and she put all that maskhara in her face. Or mascara, whatever they call it. Isn't it? And then she put all that things in her face and then she beautified her say, and then and then she went and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when she says, Wa ghalaqati al-abwab. Look at the Arabic. Wallahi Arabi is so powerful, beautiful language. Allah does not say wa aghlaqati al-abwab. Wa ghalaqati al-abwab. And she locked the doors. And after she beautified herself and everything, she came into Yusuf and then she locked the doors. And then she told him, Yusuf, Yusuf, haytalak. As if she's saying in our language today, Yusuf, I'm all yours. 
something like that. I don't know. Hey, Talak. Yeah, she locked all the doors and everything, and then she had yeah, all that, that thing in her face, all the, you know, the, 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 the paint, whatever they do, you know. And then she goes into Yusuf. What does Yusuf do? Also, Yusuf runs away. He runs away. And what is he saying? Ma'ad Allah, inna hu rabbi, ahsana mathwai, inna hu rabbi, inna hu La ma'ad Allah, inna hu rabbi. No, 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 no. I'm not going to be falling into this. I'm not going to fall into this trap. So this guy is the same thing. He's running away from her, running away from her, running. She's, he's running right, she's running right. He's running left, he's running right. Leave me alone. And he's not looking at her. He's not, imagine he's not, because she's all naked, man. Don't imagine this, guys. He's just running away, running away, but she kept on running around, running around in this room. And then she felt so tired. She came out. The guys were waiting for her outside. They said, yeah, tell us, did he do it? Did he do it? She says, by Allah, I don't know whether I'm a man or a woman. <laughs> she says in Arabic, Wallahi la adri. Auntha ana am dhakar. Wallahi la adri. Adkhaltumuni ala basharin am ala hazar. She says, I don't know whether this guy is a man or a rock. Or a rock. What is this guy? Whether well, I know whether I'm a man or a woman. She forgot herself. Yani, she failed. She failed. So they thought of something else. What should we do to this guy? We have to break him. We have to break him. What should we do? So they thought of another thing. Starve him. They starved him. They starved him. Fine. And then they brought him some wine and some, and some, some, some pork. And he did not eat. He's able and he's allowed in these circumstances, he's allowed to eat pork and to drink wine because he's going to die. The guy is starving to death, yet he chose not to. They came to him and they said, we know in your religion, under such circumstances, you can. You're allowed to eat. You're allowed to drink. He says, yes, I know. But I do. Listen to what he says. He says, I do not want people like you to ridicule the Muslims. I don't want people like you to ridicule the Muslims. I'm not going to eat. I'd rather die. Allah, 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 Allah. So the king called him. He says, you know what? You know what? I'm going to set you free. Under one condition, just kiss my forehead. For the Arabs, they understand what that means. The Arab, you know, in the, the, the culture is like when you, when you kiss somebody's forehead, like this is a very, the utmost respect you can pay to that person. So the guy says, hmm, not for me. You set me free and you set my brothers free, those who are with me. Because they did not live alone. They lived for one another. Here's another message. They lived for one another. They did not live alone. You don't set me free, me and those who are with me. The man says, the king says, I set you free and your brother free. Just kiss my forehead. So he thought to himself, Adu Allah. Zakallah. Adu Allah, the enemy of Allah. I'll kiss his head. And he will set me in free and my brother's free. La, khalas, I will do it. There's one narration that says he went and instead of kissing his, his forehead, he said, you know. Anyways, he got free. This is, it happened in the era of Umar ibn Khattab. Some Muslims who were with him were not happy. They went to Umar to complain. Oh, Umar, this man, you know, he's with us. And then he went and he kissed the forehead of, 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 of Qaisar. It's not befitted. When Umar heard the story, he came down and he hugged that man and he kissed his forehead. And he said, it is a must on all the Muslims here today to come and kiss this man's forehead. He left a legacy. His name is Abdul Rahman ibn Hudaf al-Suhami. Here comes another man, Ibn Mumakthum, very well known man at the time of the Prophet Muhammad. Who knows this man? Ibn Mumakthum, what was he? Who was he? Yalla, guys, who was he? He was Mu'addin. Was he? What was he? He was blind. Listen, listen. He was blind. This is a lesson for those who say, I have an excuse. Look at this man, you Mr. Excusey. <laughs> this man is blind. He went into the battle of Badr and he says, or Uhud, he says, listen, listen. He says, he says, I'm blind. Give me the flag. Why well, you blind? Go back home, man. Really, Islamically, you don't have to be here. You know, go back home and sit and find and relax because you have an excuse. 
The guy says, no, 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 no. Give me the flag. I am blind. I will never run away. Allah, Allah, Allah. I will not run away. Because you know what? I'm blind. I will not run away. He found, he was found death in the battle of Uhud. Radiallahu anhu wa ardah. Ibn Umm Maktoum. Radiallahu anhu wa ardah. How about women? When we talk about the, uh, about men and what they have done. How about women? Well, doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat li nas? Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat li nas? Ta'amuruna bil ma'ufat in hawan al-munkar? Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran say, You were the best nation that came out to mankind. You, he says, you were the best nation that came out to mankind. You does not single only out men. You compress or comprises of men and women. Islam, Islam came with the sacrifice of both men and women. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat li nas. You are the best nation that came out to mankind. Ta'amruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. You enjoin good and you forbid evil. So sisters, when you ask yourselves this question as to what's my role, what's my role as a woman, is my role, sisters, I'm going to ask you this question and tell me if yes or no. Is your role to just get married? Uh, no, no, I'm not done. Is your role just to get married and, and, and make babies? And when your husband comes from work, you wash his feet and you make food for him and you feed him and you sing a little lullaby for him before he goes to sleep and give him massage and that's it. Yes. Of course, no, 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 I don't mean to insult you, astaghfirullah. Amongst you, you are my mother, you are my, my wife and my daughter and my auntie. You are, some people they say in Arabic that women are half of the society. It's wrong. Women are the entire society. Imagine if all the schools in Oslo were to close down. If all the clue, if the schools were to shut down. What's going to happen to our youth? What's going to happen? More crimes, more problems but everything in Norway if a woman closes down if she shuts down because there are schools from that school people like Omar like Uthman like Fatima like Aisha like Khadija you produce these people sisters and brothers so do not be or misunderstand your role as a woman in Islam I'm going to give you some illustrations of course some examples of course sisters in Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah astafa Adama wa Nuha wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al-alameen. Allah has favored Adam and Nuh and the family of Ibrahim, Hajar, and the family of Imran. I'm going to talk about this woman. This woman. Ala al-alameen, upon mankind. Allah favored them. And I'm going to concentrate on the family, on the wife of Imran. What? What? This woman is so special. Give me this. I need to. Uh, what made. What made this woman so special that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. There is a, a, there is a, 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 a chapter in the Quran called Al Imran. Al Imran, we have a woman, ladies, 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 brothers, this is amazing. This is amazing. Look, this woman, she's older. She's over 70 years old. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose her, selected her, favored her. Why? Why? Well, listen to this. Listen to this. You know, 70 up or odd years old, and then she wants to have a baby. Excuse me. And she's old, man. She wants to have a baby now. She wants to party. <laughs> la, 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 la. La. <laughs> You're wrong, you, you, you crazy minded people. What are you thinking? La, Abe. She is, look, look. She wants to cause a change. She wants to cause a change. So now, what happened? She wants to do something no woman has done before her. 
What? She wants to dedicate what's on her womb for the service of God. She wants to do something no other woman has done. Sister, let me ask you another question. Any sisters who, 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 who is pregnant here? Pregnant sisters? All oh, right, mashallah. So we do have some pregnant sisters. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, once you get your baby, have you ever seen a woman delivering a baby? And after that woman delivers the baby, she cries and says, hey, what kind of baby? Taking a baby, I don't like him. Have you ever seen a woman after she delivers a baby? She says, oh, what kind of baby? I'm not happy with this baby. Kick him out. I don't like the baby. This woman was not happy, subhan al karim yani She was surprised. She wanted a baby so that that baby can change history. So what did she do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Quran. Rabbi, inni nadartu laka ma fi batni muharrara fataqabbal minni. Fataqabbal minni inna katasamil alim. Oh Allah, I have dedicated what's in my womb for you, for your service. Oh Allah, accept from me. She's a woman. She's thinking that that change can only be caused by man. So now what happened? She, be, she gave birth to a woman. She gave birth to a woman. And then, and to a girl. Yeah, not a woman. She gave birth to a girl. And then she says, oh, God, she's a girl. She's a girl. Yeah, and she's, uh, she's not really happy. She's like, oh, God. I wanted a boy. He gave me a girl. Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. And Allah, Allah has known, Allah knows subhanahu wa ta'ala what he has blessed her with. So, so for her, she is a very, 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 yani, sacred woman. And she needs another sacred woman that will give birth to another sacred man. So she, we need a very sacred woman, a very special woman to give birth to this special man by the name of Jesus. Because 300 years later, 300 years later after the death of Jesus, the Romans who are at the time, they will all embrace the religion of Christianity. Because this woman, sisters, she taught, she taught that change can only happen with with man so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to prove her wrong that change cannot only happen with man that change can also happen with what man yes or yes change can also happen look the example of this woman al imran the family of Imran, you know, when she had this baby, she, nah, she became pregnant. And she became pregnant because not because of, you know, pleasure. I told you she's old. She's old. She's over 70 years old. But she wants to be pregnant. She wants to deliver the baby so that that baby can cause some renaissance, some change. But when she gave birth, she gave birth to Mary. She gave birth to Mary. And then she said, oh God, you gave me a, a girl. And Allah knows. But from that girl, Jesus will come peace be upon him. She was a very, very special woman. Another special woman, brothers and sisters, is Khadija, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Khadija, 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 the most beautiful love story of all time. The most beautiful love story of all time is the story of the Prophet Muhammad with Khadija, his wife. Brothers here, those who are married, raise your hands. Raise your hands. I want to ask you a question. Raise your hands. Uh, brothers who are married, leave your hands up. Uh -huh. I'm going to ask you a question. And Allah is watching you. All right? Don't lie. Do not lie. Is your wife your best friend? If your wife is your best friend, let your hand up. If your wife is not your best friend, do this. <laughs> Allah is watching you, don't lie. Not because your wife is here. <laughs> you lie. Is your wife your best friend? She's your best friend. Oh, tell your wife is your best friend. <laughs> Here's Prophet Muhammad والسلام, in this cave. Today, Prophet Muhammad is 40 years old. Imagine with me. 
Prophet today is 40 years old. He is in this cave. All of a sudden, some person comes to him and hugs him very, very tight. Hugs him very, very tight. And he tells him to read. Prophet Muhammad says, I don't know what to read. or I don't know how to read. And then the man again hugs him very, very, very tight. Until the Prophet couldn't breathe. And the Prophet and the man told him, read. The Prophet says, I don't know how to read. And then he hugs him again so tight that he could not breathe. And he told him, read. The Prophet says, I do not know how to read. And for the fourth time he hugs him so much that he tells him, read. And then the Prophet says, what shall I read? And then the man says, Iqra, Allah reveals, Iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. The Prophet imagine, now he's sitting by himself in this cave, all of a sudden some guy comes to him from nowhere. From nowhere. And he comes and he hugs him and he tells him, read. And then the Prophet is really scared, he's really terrified. He goes down running, running. You know this, this mount? This mount, I don't know, some of you may have been in Mecca. This mount, it takes about two hours to walk from the bottom to the top. It takes about two hours. Here's the prophet running down, running down. He goes, he goes home. He goes to his best friend. He goes to his best friend. He goes to his mate. He goes to his companion. He goes to his soul mate. He goes to his wife and he tells her, Cover me, cover me, cover me. And then the wife, now comes the job of the wife. Now comes the job of the wife. He's a prophet, he's a prophet, yet he is scared. So she comes, she comforts him. She, he tells her the story, he tells her the story. So, so to comfort him, what does she say? She says, no, kalla. No, do not be scared. Allah will never let you down. You're a good man. You're this. She started lifting him up. She started empowering him. She started, mashallah, tabarakallah, giving him and talking about his qualities, the job of a woman. Imagine, imagine if she was to tell him, I told you and you never listened to me. I told you don't go to that cave. You went to that cave so many times. And I kept on bringing food to you. And yes, she used to go and bring food to the Prophet Muhammad She used to walk up every day. Imagine a woman, she used to walk up every day. Every day for two hours, bringing food to the Prophet. She never told him, what are you doing here in this cave alone? And I need help with you, you your kids. I need some help with you, you're leaving me alone. Let she never complain. She, when the Prophet came to her, she did not say, huh, huh, I told you, huh? Okay, now you take it now, huh? I think you're possessed. Ma'ad Allah, she didn't say that. Why? Because I'm saying this because some women, this is what happens when your husband comes to you, he needs some help, and then you hit him on the head, he will never come back to your sister. He will never come and, 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 and empty his heart to you. Because every time he comes, you know, you just argue and whatnot. La, 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 look at Khadija radiallahu anha wa rda. And then what happened? Not only that, she took him to her uncle. Not only that, she used to protect him. She used to preserve him. She used to help him. She used to assist him. And at night, she hired people to go with him to protect him radiallahu anha wa rda. In the Shab, in the siege of Banu Shab, when they put the Prophet and the Muslims for three years, three years, hungry, hungry, three years. I, Khadija, Quraysh came to her, they told her, you're fine, you can go back home. You can go back home, oh Khadija. This is not for you. She says, la. She says, no, my husband stays, I stay. If my husband go, I will go. She was feeding, she used to stay hungry, and she used to feed the Muslims. She stayed hungry herself, and she would feed the Muslims. So much so, that the angel came down before her death. The angel, Jibreel, came down before her death to convey the salam of Allah to her. To convey the salam of Allah to her. Jibreel came down to tell her, Allah and Jibreel are conveying the salam to you. The Prophet is saying, Oh Khadija, Jibreel is here, he's conveying the salam from Allah to you. And then she says, Ya Rasulullah, how should I reply salam back to Allah? If Allah tells me, Salamu alaykum, how shall I reply salam back to Allah? Then the Prophet told her, Say, Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabarak da jalali wa ikram. And not only that, Jibreel came to convey her salam from Allah and to give her the glad tidings of a house in Jannah, of a house, of a mansion in heaven from gold and pearl. She deserves it. She deserves it. She stood behind the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. 
What a great woman she was. What an amazing woman she was. Aisha, the other great woman. She lived with the prophet nine years. When the prophet died, she was 18 years old. One fourth of our Islam, of our Sharia, was narrated by Aisha alone. One fourth of our rulings of our Islamic Sharia was narrated by Aisha alone. So don't tell me, sisters, what can I do? I'm only a woman. You can do so much, sisters. Naam, you can. Just like the brothers, naam, you can. Everybody can do something. As long as you do not stay still. Don't stand still. D-S-S. D-S-S. Say don't stand still. Aywa, this is what it means. Yani don't just say, what can I do? Allah, what happens with Allah? Yeah, do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Help out. The least you could do is participate with Islam. Net. The least you could do. Do something. You know how to speak Arabic? Teach some sisters how to speak Arabic and how to read Quran. The least you could do. There's so much you could do. You don't tell me, well, I'm just a woman. And I'm just a woman. So why are you just a woman? Inshallah, yani what do you mean you're just a woman? You are, mashallah, lioness. Naam. Do not underestimate yourselves. Brothers and sisters, think. Sisters, tonight, I want you to go home and think. Do not go to sleep tonight until you have something in your mind, something to serve Islam with. Islam, dinuka, dinuka, lahmuka, damuk. People sacrifice things for Islam, yaqi. People sacrifice everything for their religion. What have you done? What have you sacrificed? And the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, when he says in the hadith reported by Tabarani and narrated by Samim al-Dari, لا يبلغ أن هذا الدين ما بلغ الليل والنهار ولا يترك الله بيت مدر ولا وبر إلا دخله الله هذا الدين بعز عزيز أو ذل دليل. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says that this religion of Islam will reach the four corners of the world. Islam will reach the four corners of the world. There will not be one single house anywhere in the world that have not heard of Islam, Islam is moving, Islam is on the go, Islam is on the go. The fastest growing religion according to the statistics is Islam. Wallahi, this is the statistics not done by Muslims by the way. Non-Muslims have done statistics. The fastest growing religion is Islam and the surprising thing is the ratio of people embracing Islam are four to one. Every, 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 person that embraces Islam, يعني four to one, meaning four women for every man. The people who are embracing Islam, four women to every man, which means there are more women embracing Islam than men. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma lak alhamd. Allahumma lak alhamd. So this religion is moving. The question now is, what is your role? The caravan is moving. Either you jump and you serve and you help, or you're gonna be left out in the back. You're gonna be left out, really. So either you move on and jump and participate and pitch in and earn and benefit, or you're gonna stay back, ya akhi. Wallah, you're gonna stay back. So do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do something for this time. Think insha'Allah ta'ala. Whatever you can do, just don't stand still. Don't stand still. DSS, do something. The least, ya akhi. Be proud of your name. Be proud of your identity. Be proud of your, of your, of your culture. Be proud that you're Norwegian, but you're the Muslim Norwegian. You're the Muslim Moroccan Norwegian. You're the Muslim uh, a Somali Norwegian, you're the Muslim Pakistani Norwegian, whatever it is, whatever it is, are you proud that you're Muslims? Yes. Brothers, are you proud that you're Muslims? Yes. Are you really proud? Yes. Sisters, are you proud of your hijab? Yes. Allah, 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 Allah. Brothers, are you proud of your beard? Yes. Are you proud of your names? Yes. Are you changing your names from Muhammad to Mo? Are you changing your name from Muhammad to Mike? No. From Abu Bakr to Bob? No. From Khalid to Kevin? No. From Jum'ah to Friday? No. Sisters, are you changing your name from Aisha to Ash? No. Because you're going to be Ash one day. May Allah bless you all. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. Barakallahu feekum, zakallahu khair. This is my final speech. In fact, in fact, one last thing, inshallah ta'ala. This is it. Khalas, I'm done. I don't know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I wish and I hope and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me, inshallah ta'ala, life again so that I can come back and see you again. It was really a pleasure. It was an honor. It was, it was, I cannot describe it. Wallahi la ilaha illa illahu. This, just the time to be here with you. It's un. You know, it's, it's priceless. I made so much dua for the success of this. May Allah bless you. May Allah reward you. May Allah preserve you. May Allah grant you the success in this life and the success of the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you see the face of Allah every day in Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah make you amongst those, uh, makes you amongst those that will be the neighbors of the Prophet Muhammad in Jannah. Say Ameen. Barakallahu feekum. Sisters and brothers, those amongst you who are here, just want to let you know one last thing, inshallah ta'ala. I'm having a retreat. I'm having a retreat in Morocco. Aywa. In Morocco, in the north of Morocco. Moroccans! Yeah. I have a retreat in the north of Morocco, inshallah ta'ala, coming up very soon. If for more information, check out my website or my facet book page. You know, Sheikh Riyad was on facet book, I'm all there. Or on my webpage, rock, www rock train, inshallah ta'ala. I think the, um, is the, now, the, you can see the poster, it's on the, uh, on the screens here. It's called Rock Retreat in the north of Morocco. Inshallah ta'ala, try to make it, try to inquire about it if you like. Inshallah ta'ala, may Allah bless you all. Zakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.